All right, this is Professor Laird, and I would like to talk for a few minutes about the importance of peer-reviewed academic journals and how to find them, particularly for your political or social science paper. So this is a short video that uh, addresses all of my social and political science classes. So peer-reviewed academic, academic journals are very important to the process of adding knowledge to all fields. This is where the scientific studies are published. These are, there's dozens, dozens of these journals just in the political and social science realm. So what we have here is where the scientists and the scholars and the professors and the academics and so forth, this is where they've in some cases been doing decades worth of research and when they're ready to publish their findings, then they submit their findings to one of these journals that pertains to what their topic is that they are trying to get published of what they found. So the journal sends out their copies of their article to peers, other professors, other scientists, eco economists, anthropologists, psychologists, whatever may apply. They send the copies out for review by the peers. These fellow scientists then are scrutinizing this paper thoroughly for its hypothesis, for its data, for its method methodology. They're looking for accuracy, objectivity, logic, reasoning, errors, things like that. So what these peers do after thoroughly reviewing this uh, paper, they provide comments. And what the journal then does is compiles these comments when they get them back from all the, the peer reviewers and then submits them back to the submitter or returns them back to the submitter. And if the submitter is lucky, he'll actually get the red marks and comments on there that says revise and resubmit. So this peer review process is very arduous, very incremental, just like science is itself but it's part of the scientific method which is extremely important for adding to our body of knowledge. This is uh, important to the continuing knowledge and understanding of our world. So at part of the things of what I teach is how to maintain the credibility of the scientific method to continue an appreciation for it so that we can try to get the knowledge and understanding that we need without just being based on what we believe or what we think is right or wrong. So very important to uh, contributing to our understanding of how the world works and why human beings do the things they do. So the uh, there's lots of these journals <clears throat> and we'll look at a few of them here. These are various journals that are pertinent to uh, political studies, for example. And the whatever class you, you're in, I typically add an appendix to the syllabus that gives a sampling of some uh, very prominent peer-reviewed journals that uh, apply to politics. So let's talk just a few minutes about where we find these, how do we find these, so that we can use them in researching for our papers, depending on what our topic is. All right, so what we'll do first is go back to the front page of the Bergen website, and what you want to do first is go into the library right there. Now, the library has lots of books and reserves and other types of media that is on hand that you can access, but what we're going to be needing to get into for these peer-reviewed journals are the databases. Here are the two major databases that I use predominantly, Academic Search Premier and ProQuest Research Library. Now this is where you cannot Google this. Google is not going to get you into these databases. And your, the fact that you are a student and pay tuition for the library services, that gives you access to thousands and thousands of peer-reviewed articles through these databases that the journals subscribe to so that academics and 
scientists and students like you can find all of this very important information. So let's just go into the academic search premiere and this brings up a good point because if you're off campus, you can still access into the databases. Now, this is your EBSCO search engine, which works somewhat like Google would in this particular database, but of course Google is not going to be able to get into this because this is proprietary information. So what you want to do is enter your search terms here in order to find your journals that are that have published information on your topic. Now one thing that you might want to do first if you want to focus just on peer-reviewed journals is go down here and look at this uh, button. Push this button and you will your search will focus in on just the scholarly peer-reviewed peer journals. Now if you didn't click this button you'd get all kinds of articles from Time and Newsweek and The Economist and all that which is which is fine if you want to broaden your search initially, but uh, for just the peer-reviewed journals, this is what you'd click. So now when we go here for our search terms, now here's where you could use a little practice and uh, tweaking to figure out what it is that you want to search for. For example, if my paper is on illegal immigration, for example, and I just type in immigration, let's see what we get. What we'll see here <clears throat> is that We've got over 100,000 journal articles to choose from, and that is just way too broad. So what we can do then is narrow it down still more into illegal immigration and click on that. We're still at 4,000, 4, and of course, we might be able to find some good articles here. Now, here's where the journal title is, political behavior. That's the most important thing. Journal of Community and Applied Social Psychology. That's the title of the journal. Public Opinion Quarterly. That's another journal right there. So these are the, in italics, these are the journals that is publishing this information. Here we have Illegal Immigration, Deportation Policy, and the Optimal Timing of Return. So let's just narrow it down a little bit more. And this is where you use the AND term which is going to narrow it down to articles that have that are about illegal immigration and whatever else you want to zoom in on. I'm going to say social costs because that's a right now immigration policy is a pretty big topic that uh, the current president has been trying to address. The the presidential election, the, the candidates are also addressing immigration policy and social costs that are involved with illegal immigration. So let's put the search term there. And as you can see, we've narrowed it way down, probably because of that term social costs, which narrows it way down. We're down to about 230 articles here. And as you can see, here's one with uh, cultural studies. Here's one from the Harvard Law Review. Every law school has a law review journal that's peer-reviewed looking at legal aspects of a particular topic and so now social costs may have narrowed it down a little bit too much let's see how immigration became legal illegal let's see um, economic violence the mathematics of Mex Mexico immigration policy this is from policy studies let's just look at that one quickly now first of all if you click on the title that's going to give you the title page and this information right up here is this information all up here is really what you need for your citation right there we'll get into that here in just a second now every peer-reviewed or most peer-reviewed journals have what is called an abstract and that basically tells you generally what they have found so this is a very useful thing to read first is your abstract because Remember when you would read mystery novels, you'd have to read the whole novel to get to the last page and figure out who done it. Well, you don't have to do that with these because they tell you who done it right here in the abstract. Now, it looks like that this article is talking about factors that influence a certain passage of a bill on immigration policy and how that has perhaps been shaping the perception of immigration through that study concludes that misuse of numbers production of media 
spectacles is present illegal immigrants as quite harmful to the U.S. and society. So that's looking at the influence of media on public perception. Now, let's go back, and I want to narrow it down a little bit differently. And instead of putting <clears throat> social costs, I just I'll put to economics because what I really want to look at is the economics of illegal immigration. So I'll put economics and illegal immigration. Click on that. And as you can see, it gave me a lot more choices. But here's right up front this one from the Journal of Ethnic and Migration Studies. Now, if they have a PDF full text, you can click right on the PDF full text and you can download this file or you can print it out right up in here. And so this one was published in 2009. And let's see, this one says here, the, the paper argues that illegal immigration has a positive impact on the U.S. economy, although illegal immigrants impose a fiscal cost at the state and local levels. So this cost should be addressed by efficiently allocating resources between federal and state governments. So that gives you an idea of what they found. You could perhaps read a little bit in the conclusion page to get a little bit more idea of what they found to figure out if this is a journal that you would like to, to download or save to put it on your file or your zip drive or whatever and then you can use that when you start compiling your notes for your paper of that topic. So here we have the welfare effects of illegal immigration. So again we can click on the PDF file there it takes us to the front page of the journal. Here's our abstract right here. And uh, says here, analyze the welfare effect of illegal immigration on the host country. Positive for two reasons. So again, it says there's a positive effect. And the introduction, well, it says here that immigrants are paid less than their marginal product. And second, after an increase in immigration, domestic households find it optimal to increase their holdings of capital. And so the introduction of a minimum wage leads to job competition, reverses above results. So that gives you some other ammunition to look at as far as analyzing this issue from all sides. Now let's go back to, now first of all, this is the general method that you would use to find your peer-reviewed academic journal articles. And this is your basic information right here that goes into your citation. I'll show you that in just a second. And most importantly, what you're trying to find is peer-reviewed academic journals, Journal of Ethnic and Migration Studies would be one. Now, as we go back here and review fairly quickly, peer-reviewed academic journals, you Go through the library databases. Those are a couple that we've already talked about right here. The uh, academic search premier is the one that I just looked at. Check the peer-reviewed box to narrow it down a little bit. You can use the word and to narrow down your, your list of articles. And one more thing for now, the source. When you cite your source of your academic journal, it's very simple. The, the format is always the same. It's the author's name, lead author first, last name first, period, the year it was published, period. Then the title of the article, you can put that in quotation marks to bring that out, and then a period, and then most importantly of all, the name of the journal in italics, followed by the volume, issue, and page numbers of that article. Of course, all that information is right there on that abstract page that we, we looked at. Here's an example of an article that I talked about in one of my classes in the Journal of Politics. So here's the lead author, last name first. Here's the co-authors of the study right there, period. And then the year the article was published, period. And then I put the title of the article right here, genetic 
and environmental transmission of political attitudes over a lifetime in quotations, period. And then most importantly, in italics, the Journal of Politics, Volume 71, Issue 3, pages 1141 to 1156. So that's generally some information there on what peer review journals are, how to find them, and how to cite it. So I will later on post another video of looking at some additional credible sources.